From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Welcome and through the worldwide channels of VK1WIA, I'm Graham, VK4 Baker Baker. In the news this week, well-known Brisbane broadcaster John Knox rewinds, VK3 FUR speaks on Pride, VK7 Whiskey Whiskey, our resident bookworm joins us, Jason with a story on where not to go parking, and Cole with a brief Jota 2020 wrap-up. Now last week we did promise President Greg would give us his board report, However, joining us instead is WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3GK, who'll give us a look at amateur band intruders and their reporting. This and more in this edition of news from the Wireless Institute of Australia. VK1WIA. Watch our space. The University of West Australia is set to install an optical communication station capable of receiving high-speed data transmissions from space. The communication station will be able to receive data from spacecraft from anywhere between low Earth orbit, that is between 160 and 1,000 kilometres above planet green, to as far away as the surface of the Moon, some 384,000 kilometres. Astrophysics group leader at UWA and the International Centre for Radio Astronomy said optical communications are an emerging alternative to radio waves and are expected to drastically improve data transfer capabilities from space. Data from the station will then be fed to Goonhilly's supercomputer data centre in England by high-speed fibre. The ground station is expected to be operational from as early as next year, 2021. Optus claims to have set a new Australian 5G speed record with a download speed of over 2.5 gigabits per second using a Samsung Galaxy S20 5G device on the first of its new high-speed 5G sites that will be deployed in Sydney and Melbourne. The demonstration conducted in conjunction with Ericsson and Samsung involved using mid-band spectrum and 5G carrier aggregation to achieve blazing fast 5G speeds. Meanwhile, Optus plans to add an additional 100 MHz of 3,500 meg spectrum to its 5G home internet service in select areas of Sydney and Melbourne over the next few months. This will result in faster average speed for customers within the footprint. Optus says its 5G home internet service is delivering average speeds of 214 megabits per second, with some users experiencing speeds of over 300. Writing in criticalcoms.com.au, John Stanton, the CEO of Communications Alliance, tells how telecommunications are essential to keeping Australians connected. The COVID-19 pandemic and the bushfire disasters in late 2019 and earlier this year have once again, and more powerfully than ever, have highlighted the criticality of telecommunications infrastructure for all Australians. With all aspects of our lives now being digitised in some form or another, telecommunications networks are essential to the functioning of Australia's economy and society, especially during emergencies. Warning Australians of dangers and delivering targeted information into affected areas is crucial, but can be challenging during emergencies. Cell broadcasting, a standards-based technology that is already being used in New Zealand and internationally, offers capabilities that would help overcome many of those challenges. Australia's mobile operators stand ready to engage with government over ways of how such a solution could be implemented here in Australia. Cell broadcast alerting is a newer way of sending information to mobile phones in a set area without people needing to download an app or subscribe to a service. The alerts appear similar to text messages and are received automatically and for free by all cell broadcast enable mobile phones in an area. As no technology is 100% fail-safe or equally useful in all conditions and emergencies, multiple channels will continue to be used to send alerts when emergencies happen, such as radio, television, websites, various social media, smartphone apps, sirens and others. The system is well established elsewhere in the world in countries such as the US, Japan, Israel, New Zealand, Chile, the Netherlands and Taiwan. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions.
www.wia.org.au. This is Lee Moyle, VK3GK and WIA Vice President for WIA News. Amateur band intruders and their reporting. For those HF users in the past couple of weeks who have been active on the bands, you may have experienced a quite noticeable increase in the propagation, especially on the higher bands. Along with that come intruders to our bands, whether in the form of over-horizon radar, taxis on 10FM, or just the annoying fishing boats, usually all from our northern neighbours. The WIA IARU monitoring system, WIMS, is a part of the IARU global monitoring activities of the amateur service across all three regions. Australia belongs to the IARU Region 3. Information is shared with the other national societies within the region and other regions to assist with locating and identifying intruders. The WA has a long-established arrangement whereby amateurs can report possible unauthorised non-amateur transmissions within our primary HF bands to the WIMS coordinator. The nominated WIA monitoring system coordinator is Peter Young, VK3MV, who can be contacted by email on intruders at wia.org.au. Reports of identified intruders are also lodged with the appropriate Spectrum Management Administration to enable removal action to be taken. The WIARU monitoring system is an agreed mechanism between the Australian Communications and Media Authority, ACMA, and the Wales Institute of Australia, WIA, to identify and instigate compliance action to remove non-amateur intruders, which are causing substantial interference to Australian amateurs in amateur HF frequency bands, which are designated by the ACMA for exclusive use by amateurs. The ACMA interprets substantial interference as a level of interference which degrades reception by a considerable degree. The ACMA is obliged under the WIA IARU monitoring system mechanism to investigate and as much as practical resolve intrusions into amateur HF bands in which uh, Australian amateurs have primary status. The agreed procedure between the ACMA and the WIA for forwarding intruder complaints from the WIA has a nine-point process which can be found at the WIA website at https colon slash slash www.wia dot org dot au forward slash members forward slash protecting forward slash about the WIA and the ACMA have developed a standard WIMS reporting form an Excel spreadsheet that should be used to record your observations alternatively you can use the online reporting form for reporting one-off intruders found also on the WIA website To file reports, it is important to follow the proper established channels that are in place via the WIA, ACMA and IARU mechanisms, whether a local WIA affiliated club, online radio club or a dedicated individual, as this will not waste precious volunteer time and actually provide proper reporting to the appropriate authorities to address the intruders and their removal from the amateur bands. This is Lee Moyle, VK3GK and WIA Vice President for WIA News. Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. Hello. QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo is coming to a device near you soon. The crew at CQ have put out a call for speaker presentations for their next QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo in March 2021. As Eric Guth for Zulu One Uniform Golf said in an email to us this week, We're looking for amateur radio presentations on any amateur radio topic from any place in the world where hams live and operate and intend to fill the weekend with excellent and educational ham radio content. We also made an investment in speaker management software to allow us to make sure that every accepted presentation is onboarded easily and efficiently. In this new norm world, there's no longer a need to use local or close-by speakers for club events even. The world is our oyster. See you at the Expo. To the South Pacific Rotuma Memorial D-Expedition. Tony 3 Delta 2 Alpha Golf will once again visit in December and be active as 3 Delta 2 Alpha Golf Portable. While there, Tony will erect a monument on the island to his late son, who drowned during his visit to the island in January this year. In his son's honour, Tony is calling this visit the Rahanisi Memorial D-Expedition. 
The trip will primarily be for the purpose of finalising the Tombstone Memorial. He will stay in Rotuma, Oscar Charlie 060, until about mid-January 2021, and wireless-wise, he'll mostly be on CW and FT8. Note, however, this de-expedition is another of a growing list who use PayPal for direct QSOs. To South Africa, 117 South Africans received their ham radio licences. SARL report all licences for candidates who pass the August RAE have been issued by the communications regulator ICASA. South African radio amateur exams are usually held twice a year in May and October. This year, only one exam, August 29, has been held. In September, the SARL reported 119 candidates had passed the August RAE. In a normal year, just under 200 people usually pass either their Class A or Class B exam. The population of South Africa is about 57 million, twice that of Australia, 25 plus million mid-2020. In the United Kingdom, Radio Ham attacked while operating near Cheltenham. The Gloucestershire Echo reports a radio amateur was attacked by four men while operating from Ags Hill, Cleve Common, near Cheltenham. He was approached by four men. Two of the men assaulted the victim by pushing him into the car door and punching him in the side of the head, said a police spokesperson. After the assault, the four men left the scene together in a Land Rover, he added. The incident happened at about 9.20pm in the evening. Nothing was stolen during the incident. However, one of the offenders shouted something about recording. The victim said, which leads the investigating officers to believe the offenders may have misconstrued the victim's actions, as he was using radio equipment in the course of listening to his broadcasts due to using amateur radio in the course of his hobby. 146 MHz experiment to continue. UK hams do not have the same two-metre privileges as we have here in VK, but some good news from their regulator Ofcom. This week, their temporary use of 146 to 147 megahertz band, which was set to expire October 31, will be available for a further year. To take advantage of this band, the UK hams need only to apply for a new notice of variation, even if they've held one before. The NOV is issued free and is available to all UK full licence holders, but the band is intended for technical and experimental work and should not be used for modes or operations that normally take place in their 144 to 146 MHz band. Unveiling ceremony to commemorate Battle of Atlantic and Fern Blodgett Sund, the first female radio operator to go to sea. It was a virtual unveiling ceremony for the Fern Blodgett Sun Bronze Memorial Saturday, October 17, 2020 at Coburg by Lake Ontario. Fern, 1918-1991, grew up in Coburg with the dream of sailing the high seas and determined to serve Canada when World War II broke out. She was the first Canadian woman to graduate with a professional wireless radio operator's certificate and the first woman ever to work deep sea as a ship's radio operator or as Sparks. Fern carried out her duties with outstanding competence and great courage during the Battle of the Atlantic. It was incredibly dangerous as Allied ships fighting to get personnel and crucial supplies to Britain faced U-boats, mined waters, enemy aircraft and the perils of the sea as a battlefield. Fern was aboard 78 of one ship's, the Mosdale record 96 transatlantic crossings. Later in this WIA news bulletin, Nick VK7 Whiskey Whiskey will take a look at Australia's first woman to hold a wireless experimenter's licence. For WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. Available on RF and on demand 24-7 from the wia.org.au website. Education now, free radio training. The Tate Radio Academy provide online courses in DMR and many other modes and many of the courses are free. You just need to register, and then the course becomes available to undertake at your pace. 
On last week's VK7 WIA News, Sean VK7 FAZE provided the link we like and now the link is in this text edition of this bulletin from your WIA. Now, operational news with Felix VK4 FUQ. 2020 this weekend. CQ LYDX SSP October 24 25. CQ LYDX CW November 28 29. Spring VHF UHF field days in November 27 28. December 6 to 8 160 metres worldwide. December 14 15 10 metres worldwide. DX window. Australia. VK 65 PFA will continue until the 24th of November, marking World Polio Day. Visit the QRZ page of VK 65 PFA for operating and QSL details. Members of the Wireless Institute of Australia are QRP with special call VI 110 WIA until the end of 2020 to celebrate our 110th anniversary. Activities on the HF bands and QSL is via LOTW. OR-39C Lemon Belgium commemorates the liberation in 1944 by Canadian troops. Folk all through the region take part in the Canadian Liberation March, where pre-COVID many thousands of walkers participated in the march that follows the route that was taken by the soldiers, that being between Western Schleit in the Netherlands and Hockeyhist in Belgium. This is the 39th year that they have had special events stationed on the air, so the special event call this year will be OR-39CLM, Canadian Liberation March. OR-39CLM is QIV until only November 13. Listen for Don, K60, who is active as 7Q6M from a mission hospital at the Loudoun Station in Malawi, a landlocked country in the southeastern Africa, until the middle of December. He will be using CW and SSP at various times. Usually on 20, 40 and 80 metres and his residence, he will operate FT8. You can also listen for him during the CQWWDX SSB contest this weekend, October 24th and 25th, and the CQLYDX CW contest on November 28th and 29th. Send QSLs to k 6 zero Update of October 16 is a list provided by the US Postal Service. Read temporarily suspending international mail acceptance for certain destinations due to service impacts related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Suspension due to foreign postal operator service suspension includes Madagascar, Turkmenistan and Libya, while suspension due to unavailability of transportation includes Lebanon, Republic of Congo, Samoa, Timor-Leste, Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea and Syria. For vk one WIA National News, I'm Felix, vk 4 fuq Inningham. Australian amateurs have recently launched a new international club to promote and embrace diversity in the radio hobbies. The Pride Radio Group exists as a safe and friendly community for people from all walks of life to discuss and experiment with radio while showing pride in their identity. Membership in the Pride Radio Group is free and has already attracted over 100 sign-ups. Activities include a global net, a future contest and special events to promote the group and build a community. Learn more about the Pride Radio Group on the website at prideradio.group. Hi, this is Nick, VK7 Whiskey Whiskey. It wasn't that long ago when we heard about the book Four Men and a Walrus, but here's a new one. Take note, because it's about our amateur radio heritage. This book is called Radio Girl by David Dufty. It's the story of the extraordinary Mrs. Mack, pioneer engineer and wartime legend Florence Violet Mackenzie. She created an epicenter in 1921 for amateur wireless operators in Sydney with The Wireless Shop. Mrs. Mack was the first woman in Australia to hold a wireless experimenter's licence. And in the 1920s, the majority of communications was by CW, and Mrs. Mack was captivated by Morse code. But there's much more in the book than what I've mentioned here. As Dick Smith describes Radio Girl by David Dufty, it's a cracking story about the famous Australian radio engineer you've never heard of. I'll be back soon with another book note. This is Nick, VK7, Whiskey Whiskey, signing clear. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia. 
through VK1WIA. Now, Special Interest Group News with Coal VK3GTV. Hello, our first item today is Amateur TV. Every pixel tells a story. Ham Radio Perspectives on YouTube has posted its first history of Ham Radio print media from QST and CQ magazine to call books, manuals, catalogues and even fiction. Also covered are some pre-ham periodicals that influenced the growth of the hobby and special columns in publications such as Popular Electronics. Worldwide special interest groups ballooning. Eleven schools across the U.S. launched helium-filled balloons carrying amateur radio payloads on October 9th. The Smithsonian Air and Space Museum live-streamed the multiple launches and the balloons were trackable via ham radio on APRS. The light of the air vehicles were intended to head east around the globe, although there's no accounting for upper air currents. Altitudes were expected to be in the 20,000 to 25,000 feet range, with the balloons taking a few days to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Some of the balloons are already out over the Atlantic, and one, the KS-1LAS-1 balloon launched from Washington, was reported over the Mediterranean on October 14th, moving at a speedy 69 miles per hour at an altitude of some 40,400 feet. Worldwide Special Interest Group's CW, the Reverse Beacon Network, Particularly for CW operators, the Reverse Beacon Network, or RBN, is an invaluable tool. It's made up of dozens of dedicated receiving stations, which report on all signals heard, both signal strength and CW speed. It's especially useful as a propagation tool. Just call CQ and see where and how well you are being heard. Use it to compare antenna performance, or to see how you're doing compared to other stations. Probably the most useful feature is a database of past spots so you can look back over time to see what was happening on the bands. The RBN is hosted by dxwatch.com and to use the system, just log into reversebeacon.net. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. Last week in this new segment, I spoke of the Kessler Syndrome, the theory that space above Earth could one day become so crowded, so polluted, with both active satellites and the detritus of space exploration's past, that it could render future space endeavours difficult, if not impossible. Now comes word that in comments to the FCC, ARRL has targeted two specific areas of concern regarding a further notice of proposed rulemaking, that being mitigation of orbital debris in the new space age. In comments filed, the ARRL focused on the areas of indemnification and manoeuvrability slash propulsion. Indemnification places the liability for any possible damage from a satellite on an individual or entity. ARRL reiterated its assertion that, as a practical matter, an indemnification requirement would seriously impair the ability of amateur and university experimenters to launch and operate satellites under US auspices due to the potential liability and high insurance cost. Although the FCC has announced plans to delete the secondary amateur radio 3.3 to 3.5 gigahertz allocation, that amateur allocation will remain in place just across the northern US border. Radio Amateurs of Canada said that the FCC action has raised concerns among Canadian amateurs, but this FCC action does not directly affect Canadian amateurs who continue to have a secondary allocation on this band. World Radio Communication Conference 2023, WRC 23, will include an agenda item to consider worldwide allocations to mobile internet services in several bands, among them 3.3 to 3.4 gigahertz and 10 to 10.5 gigahertz. The International Amateur Radio Union has announced its intention to vigorously defend amateur interest in both bands at WRC 23, and RAC representatives in Canadian working groups preparing the Canadian positions for WRC 23 agenda items are said to be doing likewise. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA, OC139. Grant, VK5GR, advises us that he is returning to Kangaroo Island, OC139, 
January 11 to 22, 2021. After a successful trip in July this year, Grant said he'll be returning to Kangaroo Island in January for a longer break, and as we get closer, details of what bands and modes will be active will be announced on his webpage. That's IOTA, and in this special interest group segment of WIA National News, we often have other OTA news, such as SOTA, YOTA and JOTA. Well, now we have another OTA being ROTA, R-O-T-A, Recipes on the Air. The ANZA net on 14.183 MHz at 0515 UTC daily, and on Thursdays they have the recipe for fun. Ladies' Day is now held on Thursdays each week with ANZA net controllers, Lynn, VK4SWE when available, and Shirley, VK5YL, and is usually followed by Rota, Recipes on the Air. These YLs and OMs would love to hear some new voices and invite you to join in the fun. And just before I leave you, a big thank you to all the amateurs who provided stations or answered CQ calls for the Worldwide Scouts and Guides Jamboree on the Air, Jota, last weekend. Numbers were down due to COVID-19 restrictions, however the event was still very successful, including generating interest within youth members to becoming licensed amateurs in the future. I'm Cole, VK3GTV, and I'll catch you next week with more Worldwide Special Interest Group news. I'm VK4FJRK, John Knox, and this is Rewind. 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 Recording industry pioneer Jack Holzman, XK2VEH, marks a milestone. A recent online Rolling Stone magazine article chronicled the career of Jack, at one time a radio ham, who went on to become a recording industry and technology pioneer. Seventy years ago, K2VEH co-founded Electra Records, a label well known for folk and blues fare, and he signed such diverse acts as The Doors and Judy Collins. He helped launch both the CD format and home video and sat on the board of Atari, which revolutionised home entertainment in 1977 with the Atari 2600 game console. He also set up the pilot program that became MTV and held executive roles at Pioneer Electronics and Panavision. And Rolling Stone's Tim Ingham wrote, Jack was also behind the authentic sound effects albums that became popular with radio and television producers and helped put Electra out of debt. In a photo in Rolling Stone, a young Jack Holzman is sitting with cans on and right hand on a key in front of a desk laden with now vintage ham gear. The image does capture a professional tape machine, however, so it's possible that Holzman's ham shack and home studio were one and the same. A WRL print QSL card is visible in the background and a bit hard to see, but it displays Holzman's call sign K2VEH. It's not known how long Holzman was a radio amateur, but judging from the stack of equipment in front of him in the photo, he must have fired up that Globe Scout once in a while when not building the Electra label. I'm VK4FJRK, John Knox. 2020 social scene as we wrap up the news this week. Saturday, November 28, the Rockhampton Amateur Radio Dinner, VK4 Tark Christmas Party, Sunday the 13th of December, and Friday the 18th of December, also in Townsville, the Tark Christmas Lights Tour. 2021, the one everybody's hanging out for is Wyong Field Day, still set for Feb 28. In VK4, Tark Australia Day Long Week Family Radio Camp, Thursday afternoon the 21st to Tuesday the 26th of January at the Girl Guides Association of Queensland Campsite and their training centre at Blue Water. A Lara meet happens in 2021 at Bendigo, October 1-4. to And back to Miana, the VK7 Biennial Ham Fest at their community hall will happen in November. Now till next we meet, I'm Graham, VK4 Baker Baker. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au.